Unmanned aerial vehicles, or drones, have been a source of controversy over their use in the military. Lately, though, the appearance of drones in civilian settings has also been grabbing headlines, and the debates they stir up are no less controversial. I've come to Northumberland to speak with a manufacturer that caters to one part of this growing global market. Quest QAV is a manufacturer of small unmanned aircraft. Fixed wing style, not helicopters, that are designed primarily for environmental uses around the world. Here is a completed aircraft. In the back of it is effectively... Quest UAV's latest design is a modular drone that can accommodate a range of different camera sensors for land survey and agricultural uses. We're talking about your high resolution camera, a multi-spectral camera, a hyperspectral camera, infrared. And what does that tell you about vegetation? Um, vegetation, whether it's healthy or poor, gives off different amounts of infrared. And by really trying to analyse this very, very closely, um, a farmer or agriculturalist can work out when crops are ready to be cropped, what kind of fertiliser needs to be put down. It's also very good in analysing the spread of tree disease. We've got quite a problem in this, in this country. And so as the disease is spreading, this can be very clearly mapped out through this analysis of what we can't see with our own eyes, but technology can see through the eyes of a UAV. So being held in really nice... As Nigel set out to demonstrate how robust his UAVs were, by trying to destroy one, I wanted to find out how easy it would be for a novice to pilot a UAV. So, after a quick go on a simulator, it was on to the real thing. A UAV like this can weigh up to four kilograms, so before one can take to the sky, a rigorous set of pre-flight safety checks has to be carried out. On the laptop we make a plan so we can fly a whole field. Once we've made a plan and uploaded it to the aircraft, the aircraft's completely autonomous. We don't have to touch it at all. It's a pretty advanced autopilot. It's what you pay the money for. Are you ready? OK. OK, three, two, one. What you're seeing now is it's doing legs backwards and forwards. It's like a lawnmower that's going backwards and forwards and every two seconds taking an image. From these images, they're georeferenced, the aircraft knows where it is, and then it can create this, this three-dimensional model. It's something called pixel matching. So it's, so it's flying up there at the moment, and, and this is completely uncontrolled. What, what if something went wrong? I don't know. If it... Right, if something goes wrong, I can instantly take control. You're going to be flying this soon. OK, right, Charles, follow and do what I tell you. This is where I'm worried that hundreds of pounds of equipment is going to be destroyed. Let's try thousands of pounds. Thousands of pounds. <laughs> okay, I've stopped the turn. That's good. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to fly over the top of you. That's Heights, fine, John? 220 feet. Put the power up just a little bit in your left hand. A little bit more. That's good. Yeah, keep it going. Keep that happening. Turn the aircraft to the right hand side. Okay, right. John, I'm going to put it back to auto. Well done, you've flown a UAV. <laughs> <laughs> With its sophisticated autopilot, as well as some advanced safety features, a Quest UAV costs nearly £20,000. However, there is a booming market in consumer drones, and I spoke to one group who feel that stricter limits need to be in place when it comes to making the eye in the sky available to all. What we really need to see with drones is that proper regulatory framework and the oversight before authorization is given to too many public authorities and too many private sector drones are out there and it's too difficult to control them. Trying to cut the access to the technology is incredibly difficult, especially as drones are readily available to buy on the internet. So does part of the debate need to be, should it be illegal for somebody to buy a drone off the internet, especially if it's from an untrusted source so they could potentially fall from the sky and hurt somebody? It's something that we feel very much needs to be regulated at the moment. In the UK, the Civil Aviation Authority governs the use of UAVs. The rules state that a UAV cannot be used within 50 metres of a person or property and must always be in the operator's line of sight. By arrangement, exceptions to these rules can be granted. However, when we contacted the CAA to get permission to use a drone to film this interview on the roof of the Guardian, they turned us down because, they said, it is a congested area. I mean, it's deeply disappointing that the CAA didn't want to take part in this. I think they have to be really key in the debate around drones and I think they have a duty to assure the public 
that drones are being used in a necessarily proportionate way and they're the only ones at the moment who can do that. We do not want hundreds of thousands of vehicles like this zipping around the skies unless it's a really, really good control and authority over them and that does not seem to be able to be possible for quite some time yet. The problem of how to control civilian drones doesn't end at legislation. Trying to enforce the rules can lead to a confusing lack of responsibility from the authorities. If you look at the situation that we have at the moment with CCTV, private individuals are putting up CCTV in their home, but it's not just looking at their front or back doors, it's looking at their neighbour's garden. Unfortunately, if they go to complain to the Information Commissioner's Office, they say, this isn't an issue to do with us, you have to go to the police because it's a harassment issue. They go to the police and they say, this isn't a harassment issue, this is a data protection issue, go back to the Information Commissioner's Office. So nobody really knows whose responsibility it is to deal with private drones, so I think it's very important to get that regulatory framework there and secure so people can have trust in the benefits that drones can bring. The data we can get, how we can transform the, the invisible to the visible, all the stuff that we can't see will then be able to see with the right kind of sensors. It's so exciting. There are many positive uses for this new technology, such as making films and TV, agriculture, journalism, emergency services and even humanitarian aid. But with mass availability around the corner, do we have the rules in place to protect both our safety and our privacy?